So as you'll soon learn, there is a specific sauna protocol that can allow you, can allow anybody, in fact, to increase the amount of growth hormone released into their brain and body 16-fold. That's right, 16-fold. However, it involves shifting from a hot environment to a cool environment, to a hot environment, to a cool environment over and over and over again over a very short period of time because it engages a switch, a process that compounds, it builds on itself to increase growth hormone further and further. In fact, if you were to just get into a sauna for a very long period of time and crank up the temperature to match the exact temperature that was used in that study, you would not experience those increases in growth hormone. It really is the transition between hot and cool temperatures that engage the process of heating and reheating over and over again. Now, the science of heat and heating and cold and cooling, for that matter, goes back well over 100 years. In fact, it's kind of amusing to me that nowadays there's a kind of renewed interest in the use of heat and cold and the science of heat and cold. Nowadays, not just on social media, not just in the landscape of biohackers and athletes, but in the landscape of mental health and frankly, in the general ethos around health optimization, people are really interested in heat and cold. And the reason they're so interested in heat and cold is that a lot of the science has been done both in animal models and mice and in humans and translates immediately to protocols that anyone can use. Now, a brief warning now and another brief warning later, anytime you're talking about heating up your body, you need to be very cautious because unlike cooling down where you have a fairly broad range of cold temperatures that you can go into before it's damaging to tissue. Well, you don't get to heat up the brain and body very much before you start getting into the realm of neuron damage and neurons in the central nervous system, the brain and spinal cord, once they're damaged, they don't come back. So hyperthermia is a serious thing to avoid. Now I'd like to talk about the use of sauna to increase growth hormone. Growth hormone is a hormone that we all naturally secrete from our pituitary, which also resides near the roof of our mouth. The signal for the pituitary to release growth hormone arrives from neurons that exist in the hypothalamus. So growth hormone releasing hormones, believe it or not, that's what they're called, stimulate the release of growth hormone from the anterior pituitary gland into the general circulation. And then growth hormone impacts metabolism and growth of cells and tissues of the body. It is responsible for tissue repair as well. And the growth spurt that everyone experiences during puberty is the consequence of growth. And yet, as all of us age, when we go from adolescence to our teenage years and then into young adulthood, but then starting in our early 30s or so, the amount of growth hormone that we secrete is greatly diminished. And one study in particular that discovered certain forms of deliberate heat exposure using sauna can stimulate very large increases in growth hormone output, which for people in their 30s, 40s, and beyond could be very useful. The title of this paper is Endocrine Effects of Repeated Sauna Bathing. They used an 80 degree Celsius environment, so that's 176 degrees Fahrenheit. And they had subjects do this sauna for 30 minutes, four times per day. So that's two hours total in one day, 30 minutes in the sauna, a period of cool down rest, 30 minutes in the sauna again, cool down rest, a third and a fourth time, okay? So (laughs) two hours total in this 80 degree Celsius environment. They did this two hours of sauna exposure on day one, day three, and day seven of that week. In subjects that did this two hour a day, 80 degree Celsius protocol, experienced 16 fold increases in growth hormone. So they measured growth hormone before the sauna and after the sauna and growth hormone levels went up 16 fold, which is obviously an enormous and it turns out statistically significant effect. Now, one important caveat here, they did this two hour a day, divided into 30 minute sessions protocol on day one, day three and day seven of a week. And what they found was on day one, there was a 16 fold increase in growth hormone. On day three, however, there was still a significant effect on growth hormone as compared to before sauna, but that effect was basically cut by two thirds. Your body adapts. So one of the key things to understand about the use of deliberate heat exposure is if you're going to use it in order to try and trigger massive increases in growth hormone, you're gonna need to be careful about not doing it more than let's say once a week.